Hello everybody and welcome back to the next installment in our Corona Physical Material series. In this one we'll be focusing all of our attention on the sheen layer which is a new feature that got introduced with the new physical material and it makes creating that realistic sheen effect a ton easier and well <laughs> a lot quicker as well. So that's what we'll be focusing our attention on in this one and before we go in and we start fiddling with all the cool parameters and whatnot, let's just do a really quick breakdown of the scene we'll be working in. So as you can see, we're in this living room type of an interior and the main star of the show for us here is going to be the sofa, which has this fabric material applied to it, to which we're going to add that realistic sheen effect. Now, as far as the fabric material itself, We've got it opened in our Corona node material editor that's right in front of us. And as you can see, it's a really simple but still good looking material. We've got a basic fabric texture that's driving the whole thing. And it's being plugged into this layer shader because we're adding some slight imperfection to it in the form of this imperfection map you see right here. Now we're doing that by simply multiplying the imperfection map on top of the fabric texture. And that is what is adding some nice slight details, some extra realism to our fabric material because, you know, imperfections are everywhere in the real world and no material is 100% clean, especially if you have kids, which apparently whoever lives in this interior does. Then to wrap up this breakdown, we've got a basic fabric looking bump map plugged into the bump map slot in our material. And that really is all that there is to it. The material is looking great, as you can see, but it's missing that nice and realistic sheen effect that will just make it look all that more convincing. So that's the breakdown. Now let's focus on the sheen layer itself. The sheen effect is that nice, kind of like a highlight looking effect, but not quite that happens on certain materials, especially if those materials are a little fuzzy or hairy. And the effect is typically more apparent if you look at those materials from the more grazing angles. And our sofa render here is a pretty good example of that behavior. Now the sheen effect is most commonly associated with fabric materials because typically those produce the most apparent sheen effect. That said, it's not just limited to fabric materials. You can see it on other objects or materials as well, such as, for example, peaches or kiwis too. And uh, this kiwi image you see is actually a Corona rendered image, just so you know. Right, okay. And so the sheen effect is present on a couple of different real world materials and how it comes to be in the real world is you have a gazillion of micro strands or micro particles even that are sticking out of your objects, out of your materials. And these micro strands or particles are so tiny that all they basically do visually is they catch highlights. And so that's what you perceive as the sheen effect, broadly speaking, of course. And in the CG world, as you can imagine, it would make very little sense to scatter a ton of micro stuff on your object because that would slow things down and so the way things are done in the vir virtual world is by simulating that effect through your actual materials. Now with the new Corona physical material to get the sheen layer going all you need to do is you need to enable it by checking its checkbox. So naturally if you now open up the sheen layers channel you'll get access to its properties. But before we do anything here let's just quickly up the color parameter here to fully bright just so we have the sheen effect working full force. And just like that we've got that nice and realistic looking sheen effect going. If we take a look at our rendered image well you'll notice that the sheen effect is really quite noticeable and it really adds a lot to our fabric material here. I, I mean we don't even have to do an A and B comparison because the difference is that huge as you can see. Obviously though the sheen effect is not always the same strength 
that might have a pattern to it or whatever the case may be, you'll eventually want to customize it to replicate the material you're trying to recreate. So let's take a look at the parameters you have available to you to tweak. So first up, we have the amount parameter. And with it, as you can imagine, we control the intensity of the sheen effect. At 100%, the sheen effect is at its strongest possible intensity. And at 20%, for example, it is a lot less intense, right? Now, obviously, you uh, should adjust this parameter according to the material that you're trying to recreate. We're going to go with 100% here. But again, it does depend on the material that you are trying to recreate. Now, what's really cool about the amount parameter is that you can plug a map or a shader into it, which you can use to add some extra realism to your material. Because if you look at our sheen effect right now, it is quite uniform, sort of even across the board, right? And in reality, somebody would probably touch or sit on the sofa, which would trample some of those micro strands, right? And those parts would then have a less intense sheen effect to them because, you know, if the strands are sticking out, then the sheen effect will probably be more intense than it would be if you sat on a part of the sofa, which would flatten those strands and they wouldn't catch as many highlights because of that. So, we have a bit of an imperfection map uh, prepared here. Uh, it's just a regular imperfection map uh, that we loaded in uh, with the Corona uh, bitmap shader. And uh, we've actually scaled it down to about 20% using the length and U, sorry, the length U and V parameters. And if we just quickly reset these to 100%, well, you're going to be able to see how our imperfection map looks like. But now, let's make sure that the scale is set correctly. So let's drop it back to 20% here, because that we know that will work great for us here. And then what we'll do is we'll just plug this map into the amount slot in our sheen layer. And just like that, as you can see, we've added realistic details to our sheen effect, because now certain parts are, well, they're less sheeny than others, as you can see. And that's probably how this kind of a sofa would look like once it was in a room and people sat on it and moved those micro strands around a little bit, right? Now, the effect might be a little too strong. So what we'll do next here is we'll bring in a color mix shader. So we'll right click in our node material editor and we'll go under new shader, plugins, Corona, and we're going to bring in a color mix shader. And then we're going to plug this imperfection map into it. And then the shader itself, we're going to plug into the sheen's amount slot. So now if we go into the color mix shader's properties, we can adjust the mixed strength. So basically, how much of this imperfection map we're mixing on top of a white color that is set here. And a fully white color means a sheen intensity of 100%. So if we drop the mix strength down to say 40% or so, well, now that imperfection map is going to be affecting our sheen amount quite a bit less than it did before. We're mixing less of that imperfection map into that white color. But as you can see, it's still there and it just adds that nice realism to it all, right? Because now that effect is not too exaggerated and it looks, well, even more realistic because of it. Okay, so that's how you can use the amount parameter in your sheen layer. So uh, let's move on to the next parameter here. And so let's talk about the roughness next. So roughness basically defines how rough the sheen effect will be. You can also sort of think about it in terms of how wide the sheen effect is. So if we, for example, up the roughness parameter here to let's say 70% or so, you're going to notice that the sheen effect is just a lot rougher now, a lot wider, and it just sort of encompasses more of the material. It's not just there on those grazing angles and, um, anymore. And the same happened in the interactive render as well, as you can see, right? 
Now, if we were to lower the roughness, let's say we lower it down to 5%. Well then, uh, now you'll see that the sheen effect will be a lot less rougher and a lot more narrower, if you will. It basically is only visible on those really grazing angles. And you can see that in the rendered image here as well. It's only visible on those super grazing angles and it's not as wide as it was before. Now, the way you want to set this parameter obviously depends on the type of material you're trying to recreate. Typically, though, I personally tend to find that I like to stick to values between 20 or 40 for most fabric materials that I'm creating. So that might be a solid starting point for you. But again, it totally depends on the type of material you're trying to recreate. Now, for our generic fabric material here, let's just go with a value of 30 percent. All right. So then there's only one more parameter left, and that is the color parameter. And as you might have guessed with the color parameter, what you're controlling is the color of the sheen effect. It's really that simple. You want your sheen to be red? Well, set your color to be red and there you go. Typically, for your common fabrics, if you want that slight extra touch of realism, what you can do is you can sample the base color of your material and then just make it a lot less saturated. And our material here is already pretty much desaturated as it is, but sometimes for that extra realism, you, sh you just want to have a slight hint of color in there. So maybe just a couple of percentage points, if not even less than that, of that base layer's color in there. So something super slight, and depending on the type of material that you're trying to recreate, that's how you could use this parameter right here, the color parameter. Now, what we could still do here is we could up the value of our sheen color it just so we retain that bright sheen look. All right. Now, with all that said about the sheen color parameter, this parameter can be of crucial importance if you're trying to recreate, say, for example, a velvet looking material. So we're starting from blank here. We just have a basic Corona physical material and we're going to create a super basic velvet material real quick here. And we're going to leverage the sheen layer to do that. First off, let's give our non-metal material a base color. So we'll go under the base layer and we're just going to input this purple-ish looking color. So we're just going to up the saturation and maybe we could lower the value here just to make that base color a little bit more dimmer. All right. Now, a velvet material has a pretty distinct sheen effect to it. So we'll enable the sheen layer by going under the basic channel here and we're just going to toggle the sheen layer to on. Then we're going to go under the sheen layers channel and we're going to up the color for the sheen layer to fully white just so we get that fully intense sheen effect going. Okay, now you can already see a cool looking effect in our interactive render that's making our material look kind of velvety, but it still needs to be, you know, tweaked a little bit. What we'll need to do here to get a more proper velvet look is we'll need to set a more proper color for our sheen color parameter here. So uh, let's sample the base color of our material here. And with velvet, typically, not always, but typically, the sheen color is lighter and more desaturated compared to the base color. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to lower the saturation down to maybe 20% or so, and we're going to up the value to maybe 70 or so. Okay. And then I think we could up the roughness just a little bit. So let's uh, increase the roughness to maybe 40% or so. And just like that, as you can see, we've created some sort of a nice basic velvet material. Now, could you further tweak things? Well, yes, of course you could. You could add more details to it all. You could add imperfections to the color slot, to the color parameter. You could add imperfections to the amount slot and so on and so forth. At that point, you're just being creative and you're trying to hone in on those details. As far as this tutorial goes, though, this is basically a wrap. 
So hopefully you've learned how to use the sheen layer. Hopefully you've noticed just how easy the sheen effect is to set up with the Corona physical material. And we hope you're inspired to go and create sheeny materials on your own. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, take care, everybody.